Project for Awesome is all about decreasing world suck. And what could decrease world suck at a, at least a small level as much as being out in the sunshine and listening to all those birds and invertebrates trying to drown me out. So here I am at the bike shed, a place which decreases world suck on a small level, but decreases it nonetheless. So uh, what drew you to, uh, to uh, become involved in this particular project? It was a bit accidental really. We had a whole lot of, uh, whole lot of bikes left over from a project where we were helping, um, it was a council funded project where we were helping uh, youth at risk to fix up a bike for themselves. Right. And we had a whole lot of bikes donated for that and uh, when the project was finished we had a whole lot of bikes left over um, and so we thought well what do we do with them and so we thought of fixing them up and uh, selling them and uh, that wasn't a particularly good idea because most of the bikes that we get are really uh, boring to work on. You'd spend a lot of volunteer time fixing them up and then you could only sell them for disappointing amounts particularly because we had the idea that we were helping um, people who couldn't afford a bike and so you felt you had to keep the prices down and that was very very poor use of volunteer time so we evolved the concept of um, helping people fix up a bike for themselves so that they learn in the process um, they acquire skills that then can go out to the broader community um, they can share with the broader community they can share with their, their neighbors with their uh, with their family which is actually the way things happen in in the Netherlands very largely um, you know, there's a res reservoir of skills out there. If you don't know how to do something, you don't know how to carry something in your bike, you don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. It's certainly very community, community involved. Um, but it also came out of, uh, you know, the people who started were also involved in lobbying for better bicycle conditions. And we realised that one of the effective ways of getting this happening was just simply getting more people out there riding. Yeah. So that's what all of these people are out here um, uh, are here to do to uh, what build bikes and do to the bikes them themselves yes. or, or, or bring their own bike and fix it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. so they start off with with a, a bike that's that's um, had seen better days yes the biggest single thing is uh, we get bikes that are, have derailleur gears on them um, the chain wears out, they go to the bike shop, the yep. bike shop says, yeah, well, we can replace the chain, that'll be $30. Yeah, we'll um, but, you know, all the sprocks are worn out, you need to replace them as well. It's, yeah. Uh, and, uh, oh, the derail is seen, but today is, you know, it's getting a bit sloppy, the, the pulleys are worn, you should replace that as well. And the uh, chain wheels here, well, oh, yes, and it's a it's one piece crank, so we'll have to replace the whole crank. Yeah. Uh, $300, roughly speaking. And so people well, but the bike only cost me 450 in the first place. It's not worth 300 And so yeah. they donate the bike to us. Well, I had the same uh, problem when my gears exploded one day and I had to buy a new bike because my gears exploded. They were useless. So a common thing here is, um, particularly with old 27-inch uh, wheeled bikes, people will convert it to a single spinner, which makes a whole lot of sense. Right. If the chain wears out, you will probably have to replace the back sprocket. Um, but that's it, chain and back sprocket and you're back on the road again. Right, so it's it's basically, all what you're doing is getting the old bikes and teaching people how to make a new bike out of an old bike. It's not really a new bike, I mean... Well, not a new bike. Still, it'll, it'll still be a fairly shabby bike, it'll be a station bike basically. It's something they can ride to the shops, the station, or to, uh, to school, university. And they can park it with impunity. So uh, we increase the amount of cycling by just simply uh, by people having bikes that they can actually ride and not worry about. And this is actually the basis of uh, cycling in places like Amsterdam. What you don't see in Amsterdam is upstairs, up there incredibly steep and narrow stairs, people carry their nice lightweight bike and they store it in the lounge room. The bike they ride every day, which is the one that you see, that's parked at the curbside. Right. Or on the footpath. It's like... Uh, yeah, that's what they ride every day, and those bikes are, you know, you don't worry too much about them. It's pro probably going to get stolen, so you don't have a bike that's too good. Um, theft rates here are much lower than in Amsterdam, but the same thing applies. You have a bike that's here, not, you don't, you know, you're not going to have to worry too much about it. So you have your, your, your good bike, and you've got your Sunday bike. Well, your, your good bike's your yeah, Sunday bike. Yeah, your Sunday bike, bike and your... 
Every, every day. day. Yeah. Yeah. And and this place helps people build an everyday. So for a more inexpensive option when looking for a bicycle, maybe you should try a bike shed. I'm dangerously talented and I don't have a cool sign off.